He is the uh, senior analyst at Pro Football Focus, Steve Palazzolo. How's that? Ah, Palazzolo. Pa- you had it there the break. I know. <laughs> Can, okay, Fritzy, you want to try? Steve Palazzolo. Palazzolo. McLovin? Yes, Steve Palazzolo. All right. Paulie? Palazzolo. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Acceptable. Steve Palazzolo joining us. Uh, senior. I got the Steve part right there. You did. Uh, Nailed it. Now, you worked for Pro Football Focus, but you were also in the minor leagues for how many years? Uh, eight years between yeah, independent ball and a couple affiliated teams. Okay. The Your, your favorite minor league story is what? <sighs> oh, man. I mean, I just – well – I'll brag a little bit. When I threw in AAA, Buster Posey was my catcher. Okay. And I threw 16 scoreless innings to him in relief over about a month. And then they put it, you know, then I threw to the backup one time, gave up five. (laughs) So I like to think backup catcher just, you know, it was his fault. Let me throw to Buster. The best player you gave up a home run to was who? Uh, Carlos Gonzalez, I think. Yeah. He was pretty good. Cargo. Yeah. 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 It was not bad. And and how many um, how many stops along the way did you have in the minor leagues? Eight years, about eight stops, nine stops. I was with the Giants, Brewers, Mariners, all over the place. Bunch of independent ball, and uh, made it up to AAA for a little bit. How close to uh, being real is Bull Durham, in your opinion? Is Bull Durham? Yeah, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of realism to it. Obviously, they're taking it to the next level with some of the one liners and stuff like that. But you know, the bus trips and the the challenges and all that stuff, pretty pretty well defined there. But you didn't have a Susan Sarandon maybe waiting after the game for you in the minor leagues. I have no comment. Not me, but I'll <laughs> tell you what. There was there is some interesting minor league cities. I'll say that. Not me, but the interesting. It's an interesting world, Dan. Uh, I'm sure it is. Uh, I think when I was growing up, they were called stage door jonies. Uh, hey, well. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, all right. Well, thanks for joining us here. And I saw that uh, Pro Football Focus, I have great respect for Pro Football Focus, that uh, you have their quarterbacks and you have different tiers here. So explain how you came up with the criteria of where you were ranking these quarterbacks. Yeah, so I'm just like, I'm naturally, I'm not good for TV because everybody wants this really nice hot take and you've got quarterback one and quarterback 32. And I'm like, look, that's just not how the NFL works, right? So you've got, I've always looked at the tier one quarterback. And I think through the years you said, okay, that's Brady, that's Breeze, Rogers, Peyton. Those guys can carry a team no matter what happens. Tier two, I feel like there's always, you know, six or eight guys in the league at any given time that you feel like, hey, they can carry an offense. Uh, You want to have a good situation around them. They're just just outside that top tier. And then tier three is probably that more most extensive group where you have these guys any given year. If, if the, you know, if the situation's right, the play calling the playmakers, they can have a great year. If that stuff's not there, they're not looking all that good. I think there's a big group of signal callers that fit into that tier three. And then four is uh, either an unknown or these guys are, you know, maybe their last year starting their last opportunity Uh, They're young. They haven't proven it yet. So I just tried to throw guys into those various buckets because I think it's uh, I think there is some somewhat clear lines around the NFL these days. Okay, your top tier quarterbacks are who? Just Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson. And I think, again, this was one of those Brady was always there and Breeze was always there. I think with their age, they're declining just a touch. I think Aaron Rodgers, we've seen him decline in recent years. He hasn't been that guy who no matter who you throw around him. Uh, the results are there. So I think all those guys dropped down a little bit. Patrick Mahomes pretty much stepped right in to being a tier one quarterback since he started. And I would say Russell Wilson kind of jumped up from two to one over these last couple of years. He was always very good. He was always one of those top eight guys, but he's right there with Mahomes and our uh, throw by throw grading over the last two seasons. Why is Lamar Jackson tier two? Uh, I think with Lamar, it's just, let's see it one more time. You know, I think, I think an important part of, you know, doing this work is saying last year is not the only thing that happened, right? You know, two years ago, he wasn't all that accurate. He did improve that last year. I think it's just, Hey, let's see it one more time. And then a year from now he could be in tier one. How big of a drop off have we had with Tom Brady? I don't think it's nearly as big as the stats would show last year. He was our 12th graded quarterback last year, but I think by all statistical measures, he was 25th or 26th or whatever it might've been. So um, I think that's kind of the beauty of the PFF system. We could say, look, we're going to grade every single throw, how, you know, where you throw it, the accuracy, the decision-making, but the stats and the output are so dependent on playmakers and play calling in the situation, as I was mentioning, 
Um, I think that took a massive step back for Brady last year. So I would say he's taken slight steps back over the last couple of years, but not nearly as bad as the numbers would show. So you would think, assuming he picks up the system with Bruce Arians, they, they're on the same page. He should have a better season with all those playmakers around him. Who else is there at Tier 2? Um, so we've got uh, – so we mentioned Lamar. Uh, why, am, why am I drawing a blank right now on these guys? Deshaun Watson – uh, you know, he's one of those guys. So Watson's kind of like Russell Wilson in past years. Wilson would always have those two or three games where you just massively question, uh, you know, wh why is he having this terrible game? That's Watson right now. You know, like one week he's an MVP candidate. The next week he's terrible. I think he's right there in that mix. Matt Ryan has uh, quietly been really, really good year in, year out. He's coming off a rough season, but I think Matt Ryan's going to be right up there. I mentioned Brady and Breeze. They're both in there. Um and then Aaron Rodgers, who I mentioned before, too. You know, again, I don't think he's been a tier one quarterback, but he's still certainly more than capable. If they put better playmakers around him in Green Bay, he'd, I think he'd bounce back, you know, quite a bit. Yeah, but they don't have better playmakers in Green Bay. No, they don't. I don't like their strategy right now. I think they're trying to uh, essentially take the ball out of Rodgers' hands rather than put it in his hands. And I think that's uh, potentially a mistake if they focus too much on the run game. Steve Palazzolo joining us on loan from Pro Football Focus, one of their senior analysts. If I said you could sign one of these quarterbacks for the same price the next five years, I gave you Garoppolo, Goff, Prescott, Wentz. Oh, man. I think it, it's between Wentz and Prescott. And I think I think it's more just because of the, their high-end capabilities. that They are all in that tier three. They're, they've all had great seasons. One of my favorite ways of breaking down that 2016 class. You've got Wentz, you have Goff, uh, and you have Dak. Uh, they've all been our top graded quarterback in one, you know, in, in a season. Dak now has two of them in the, in the four years they've been in the league. So I'd probably lean either Wentz or Dak. I, I'll go with Dak right now because I've just seen what he can do with that really nice supporting cast. But it's, it's really, really close, I'd say, between Dak and Wentz. Do you think Dak's a great quarterback? No, I don't think he's great. So I, here's what I, I think the NFL, I think over the last decade, if you went back and, you, and everybody put together a top eight quarterback list, you'd almost certainly land around the same names. I think we're at this transitional point uh, where Ben Roethlisberger's dropped off and Phillip Rivers, Brady Breeze, all those guys, right? Um, we don't know what that next tier is. So I think Dak could be in that next group. I, I just don't know that they're there yet. I think we're just in this world of, middle-class quarterbacks, and I think Dak is in that boat. I think Wentz is in that boat where, again, hmm. if you give Dak Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup and Kellen Moore calling plays, you're going to get great production like he did last year. You're going to get Carson Wentz's 2017 season uh, where he was an MVP candidate. Everybody thought, year two, here he goes. He's going to be the next big thing, but it was the situation. It was everything around him that was great. I think that's the state of the NFL. There's a bunch of middle-class quarterbacks, Dak being one of them, where when the situation's great, they can have top 10 production. Would you rather have Josh Allen or Kyler Murray? Oh, I'm going Kyler on this. Uh, we, we butt heads with Bill, Bill's fans quite a bit. I think Josh Allen's just, you know, they won a lot of games last year. He's just so inconsistent. Uh, highest percentage of negatively graded throws in our system last year. He just misses too many. He did take uh, steps forward. The rushing ability is nice, but I think Kyler's just, he's more accurate, better decision maker has that same dynamic rushing ability. I would take Kyler over Allen going forward. Who's the lowest rated starting quarterback? I'm not, I told you, Dan, I'm, I just put tears out here. I'm not trying to, to trash anybody, but um, you know, Darnold's down there. Trubisky's down there. You know, Trubisky was one of those guys. I think our system did a really good job of saying, Hey, 2018 was a mirage. You know, they won a lot of games. The stats were really good. He did not grade well at all. Um, and he regressed last year. I think it, it kind of backed up our numbers. So I think when you look at what Trubisky's done, I don't know if he's considered a starter right now with Foles in there, but um, yeah, he's been among the worst over the last couple of years. If Cam Newton was healthy, where would he be on this list? See, I think he's, he's right in that tier three. I think he's right in the middle. And I think when you go back and look at Cam's career, I, it, it, the, the headlines are interesting, right? The Patriots signed former MVP Cam Newton. I, I think he was an MVP, <laughs> but one out of his eight seasons, he's been an elite quarterback. You know, I think when you really look at his career, he's been good, not great. Which well, is his fine. rookie year, he was really good. Yeah, but he was really, he's put, he, he broke rookie records, which were, you know, a lot of okay. passing yards and, you know, like first game passing yards, things that don't really, I don't think matter going forward. So I think he's been really good throughout his career. 2015 was exceptional, but he's a good, not great quarterback. People are talking Hall of Fame for Cam. I just don't see it. But I think with New England, there's a skill set to tap into, right? Do they want to run him a little bit? He's on a one-year deal. So I think he's a tier three quarterback, which means 
Patriots use him well, if some of those playmakers emerge, yeah, he could put up some some pretty good production. Let me go back to the stats that I uh, was reading to the audience about Russell Wilson. Why is it Seattle hasn't gone all in to surround Russell Wilson with a potent offense like the Rams did with Jared Goff and like the Niners did with Jimmy Garoppolo? I think it's a philosophy that they have to run the ball to win. I really think it starts with Pete Carroll saying, look, we have to run the ball. And I think there's there's anecdotal evidence, right? Like when when we had a Marshawn Lynch and when we had that defense, we won a Super Bowl and we were one play away from winning two. And I think they think that's how they have to win. And then there was one year, I think 2015, they kind of unleashed Russell Wilson. Hey, go chuck it. We got no passing game. And they didn't they didn't win. Um, and then there was another year they unleashed him and they didn't make the play. 2017, they didn't make the playoffs. And then in 18, they mm. said, all right, we're getting back to the running game. We're taking the ball out of Wilson's hands. And they made the playoffs by like one game. And I think their thinking is just wrong um, in that. I think it's um, so th- they think they need to run the ball to win when the reality is instead of having Russell Wilson drop back 25 times, like if he drops back 35 times, he'll be OK. He can carry this team and they need to they need to put the ball in his hands. And to your point, yeah, add those playmakers around him. Uh, I don't need you to necessarily assess Jamal Adams, but the importance of the safety position in today's NFL is what? Compared to edge rusher, uh, cornerback, and anybody else you want to throw in there on defense? So the tricky part here, I'd say, so it's cornerback first. And a lot of the research we've done is actually, if you if you want to build a team, you want to do it from back to front. It's kind of the opposite of the the way I think the NFL has thought about it through the years. The Ravens did that last year. um, And obviously Seattle's doing it right now. They have our lowest graded or our lowest ranked defensive line going into the year and their secondary is top five now with Jamal Adams. So um, I'd say cornerback's most important. If you know you're going to get a good safety, it is actually probably more valuable than the edge rusher that makes 15 million a year. So I don't mind this deal overall for Seattle, but if you're going to invest in a safety, a do-it-all safety like Jamal Adams who can play every single position affect your run defense, your pass coverage, and actually rush the passer a little bit. Uh, I think there's a ton of value there. The question of compensation, though, is, is a separate one. If I said you could have Jamal Adams or DeAndre Hopkins, if you're Seattle. I'm always taking the receiver. I, I mean, again. But I, why didn't they make so- a run on DeAndre Hopkins or Stefan Diggs if you're going to make a run on Jamal Adams? I, I honestly think because they want to run the ball, it, my, my <laughs> theory for team building, my theory for team building is you try to get four deep as far as re- your receivers and tight ends, right? You want to have four guys where defensive coordinators are staying up at night to stop you. And I think Seattle's looking at, well, we got, they got their two, they got DK Metcalf. They have Tyler Lockett. Um, they still feel Pete Carroll's a defensive coach. They feel like they need to win with defense. That's why they did it. I think I disagree. I would you throw Hopkins into the mix, you throw Stephon Diggs into the mix, and, you know, make life difficult for defensive coordinators. To me, that's how you win in today's NFL. Great stuff, Steve. We appreciate your time. And now that we figured out how to pronounce your name, then we'll have you back on the show. Perfect. Anytime. Appreciate it. He was the pole bearer, and that, that's the nickname. Were you known as the pole bearer in uh, minor leagues? No, no, you... I was not good enough to have any nickname. <laughs> I think I was the leaning tower of uh, it was some sort of tower of something. Well, I don't know. Well, I you're six six nine, right? Six ten. I six listed six <laughs> ten. So six foot ten. The Thank leaning you. tower of something. Of pitcher. I forget what it was. I got to look it up. It's on the internet somewhere. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, senior analyst, Pro Football Focus.